So last year, I decided to master deep learning in uh, my career break. And as a continuation of that journey, I'm, I'm starting this where uh, um, building on top of the journey I had, I am going even further and deeper. Okay. So here in, in the journey for this year, which I've planned, I've realized that deep learning is a domain of both natures, science and engineering. Okay. And understanding the difference between two, two is critical because same data scientist has both of the aspects we need to master for being a good data scientist. Okay. They are completely different, opposing, and they are, uh, in general, their entire philosophy is completely different. So science, for example, it is concerned with the theory aspect of something, the how, the why part of questions. So in data science, it will correspond to uh, the deep mathematical, statistical probability or even uh, deep uh, neuroscience uh, aspect of how the intelligence works and why it works in, uh, for example, rats. So it goes more into theory, uh, theoretical domain than practical, whereas engineering is concerned less with the theory, okay, but more with the how, but not in the same way. Okay, same way as science, no. Science, how is for understanding. Whereas in engineering, when we want to understand how, it's like by changing how uh, we understand the nature so that, by, uh, you know, if we change something, we understand what change happens subsequently. So the how knowledge which we need in engineering is more application oriented, more practical. So it's more of a hacking nature than scientific nature. So we hack the code, we build applications, we, even if we don't understand uh, the entire uh, uh, science aspect of something, we can actually use it for our use case, What even if it is uh, inefficient. So for data science, we need to master both, not just one, okay? And that is where I have, uh, in my opinion, there are different kinds of data scientists happen to be. Okay, so the, here I have created a table according to my opinion. So let's say, let's think of an average data scientist. Uh, generally, people's nature is split kind of uh, from either science orientation to engineering, or even if they have both, it, it will at most at average be 50-50. And that's ideal. Generally, it's one is dominant over other generally. Okay, so if we consider this 50-50% scientist and 50% engineer, it means that the other 50% part of scientist is missing because the person is not a peak scientist as uh, they could be, that data scientist, that average data scientist. And that person is also not a peak engineer that they could be. So they are average in both. But if we check below, if we check the extremist data scientist, either we have 100% engineer or we have 100% scientist. Both of them are problematic because here in this one, the uh, uh, entire knowledge is of hacking. So that person might, will be able to solve a problem we have, but if the problem statements even slightly, they'll be stuck. They will not be able to help us at all. So this is actually a extreme kind of data scientist where, you know, I mean, they only know what they know, which are few things and completely useless. The other extremist is just theory wherein they understand theory to a large extent, but the practical aspect, if we ask, to, uh, ask them to apply that knowledge, then they'll be useless. So again, another extremist. If we have, uh, this is the ideal extreme condition, but generally people tend into these two categories. Either they are theoretical uh, data scientists, wherein uh, a lot of their knowledge is focused on the mathematical derivation, calculus, backpropagation. They understand all that, but it comes at expense of engineering uh, knowledge, uh, hacking with the code knowledge. So they suffer. They are not able to build applications. And even if they have knowledge, they will not be able to get jobs. The other kind is just hacker data scientist. And right now, this is most problematic according to me. What has happened is because deep learning uh, has become... Because deep learning has become easier because of open source libraries, uh, the, the hacker, just hacker data scientists, they, they have increased quite in number. So let me just say star star. Mm. 
these are the most frequent they are the most useless <laughs> because they can only they only solve a narrow problem but their arrogance about their knowledge is through the roof because they don't have 0% science knowledge they have like you know 10 20% they, they they half knowledge is dangerous and even more dangerous is 20% knowledge they think of themselves as peak of the science but you see they can only solve if the solution is already built by someone else so don't be this kind of data scientist because of internet because of chat gpt all the code of whatever is needed to you know do the common tasks let's say image classification image generation or uh, text generation all of these things right they seem very complex but most of their solutions and libraries are available now so it is very easy to become this just hacker data scientist and it is really bad you have to have the knowledge related to the theory aspect the how aspect of it only then you can customize solution in a different situation as and when needed so engineer without science knowledge is useless similarly just a scientist without engineering knowledge is also useless that's the point we are uh, i'm trying to make here we need both so last year in 2023 my focus was more on the science aspect uh, I focus more on uh, learning this aspect. After I have built a, a decent stability and knowledge about this now, and now I can actually focus on honing the skill of hacking with the code once my understanding and concepts are clear. So in 2024, my focus is on the engineering side of data science. Okay, I'll focus on things like, you know, solving Kaggle problems. Kaggle problems here, the competitions which we find here, they are real problems, real problems companies facing. Their price is around 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars. There are more than thousands of team actually participate. So you see thousands of team participate here. Here in this, there are how many? 3,400. So these many teams are competing and we kind of like find the best solution. Uh, this is how this thing grows. Okay. So by going on to Kaggle and solving these Kaggle problems, that's the real life test of knowledge. Taking it from theoretical uh, uh, to engineering thing by combining science and engineering. So can uh, extend this solution, can solve other similar problems also. Because I am not just a hacker uh, data scientist, but also building conceptual base uh, alongside it. So my ideal is this ideal data scientist where I'm equally strong conceptually and in hands on. And for that purpose, these are my four goals for this year. First, TensorFlow Developer Certificate. This is Google Cloud certification. Uh, Google we know is uh, you know a big company. So of course, any platform it provides will be pushed by it, will be used by customers. It is also a good quality platform. So all of these things ecosystem is already formed. So if you get this Devel TensorFlow Developer Certificate, it helps. Then we also have Professional Machine Learning Engineer Certification by Google Cloud. So again, Google Cloud, big company, big thing in AI, now no longer the top company, but it's still second best. <laughs> so uh, a lot of uh, customers to Google Cloud, hence, you know, a good certification to have. Then Microsoft, ChatGPT, OpenAI. We have this uh, data scientist associate, another the certification. All of all these three certifications are related to professional audience uh, to solve a problem for the company. So that's these three are my focus. And then of course, Kaggle. Kaggle is a place where these competitions are constantly hosted. But this is not just that. Kaggle has one more amazing thing. It, it is, you know, the competition means leaderboard. You, you get to know your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, ninth, tenth. So here, if you compete and you win, you get a medal. If you come into top 10%, top 1%, if you come into top 1%, you get a gold medal. And if you get multiple gold medals, then you are actually awarded a rank. And that rank is a measure of your skill. This ranking which we see here, Grand Master, Master, Expert, Contributor, Novice, it is a measure of your expertise. And once you are awarded that tier, you are uh, known as that uh, medal always. So this is pinnacle of Kaggle. 
and you uh, uh, pinnacle tier. So you see here. So this is the the measure of the application aspect of the knowledge. So this is my goal for this year continuation of the previous journey and i'll be posting videos more frequently this time around um, so keep following on this channel